scripture, science are different categories. Science is different. Science is empirical, observation, testing, and say and go on. You see, science will not deal with the spiritual matters. Scriptures will deal with the tradition, spiritual matters. You see, scriptures, for example, and so on, they are not the sort of all comprehending truth. No, they can't express the fullness of truth. But what they are important is the ultimate criteria, Jesus Christ or the Christian Bible or scriptures, what they see is criterion, the ultimate criterion. That means, you know, for example, I talk about Christians, Jesus Christ. Every truth you have to test with Jesus Christ in a sense, does it harmonize with what Jesus stands for, Jesus' personality, and what he teaches. And that is a criterion, ultimate criterion. The same way, Bible. Bible is very vast, for example, Christian Bible. Too many things there come, you see. But, you know, even the New Testament, it is very different. Even the four Gospels are different. All the things are very different. But still, the point is, the Jesus Christ will be preached in the Bible and the scripture for Christians. And so, the Christ does it with the criterion. At the same time, church community, church is a community, Sangha. Church has also to interpret Jesus Christ, for example. This is in keeping with the Jesus Christ, you see. And so, the ultimate truth means, you see, it's not the comprehensive full things. God is incomprehensible. God cannot be comprehended, for example. But the truth, the criteria, ultimate criteria, scripture, Jesus Christ, or for example, even sin, for example, like, you know, the sutras, they are very important, you see. How do they sort of uh, test the truth? That is the thing, you see, very important. Otherwise, you know, we are lost. There are so many sort of doctrines, too many things, and so on. But of course, scripture, even Jesus Christ, can be sort of complemented, can learn from others. But even learning from others, ultimately, this is the criteria, you see. They send the same way, you see. Send actually, actually, send masters will be criterion, but masters alone is not enough. The send tradition, send sutras, they must also be criterion, you see. They must check that. And so, every religion sort of thing, they have got the scriptures, they are sort of, that must be not a dead scripture, must be living scripture. That means, you know, the community must also interpret, the living community. Without community, the scriptures are dead. And so the community must interpret. And also, you know, community interpretation, you can challenge also. You can challenge. How do you challenge? Challenge with the scripture. Challenge with the criterion of Jesus Christ, for example, Christians. Or Zen, for example, with the Zen masters, with the Zen sutras, with Zen koans. You can challenge Zen masters. Many Zen masters are not all right. They are not uh, so correct in a way. So you have to see the whole tradition. You see, Zen tradition also is vast. It's not simply one tradition. And how do you choose also the criteria? You see, that's difficult. Christianity is easy. Jesus Christ uh, sort of thing. And the church interpreted Jesus Christ. But still there are different interpretations different valuations. The same also will be different. At the same time, you know, it must be, you must be faithful and they call it creative fidelity. Creative means not repeating all the time. According to the times, you must also interpret. But the interpretation must not be in the air, so to say. It must be also follow that, you see. Be true to the tradition, true to the scriptures. And so it is both true and also must be creative. And so every age must be creative and must be faithful. So Buddhism, for example, this is a major problem, you see. 
some people like a bachelor and so on, they throw away most of the Buddhist scriptures, you know, karma, rebirth, all those things throw away. And I would say they are not faithful, you see, so truly. You know, they pick and choose what I like, you see, rational thing. No, reason alone is not enough. Only a rational thing, how do you judge that, you see? But you can reinterpret karma, rebirth, all those things. You can reinterpret, understand deeply, you see. In that situation, Buddha, what Buddha said, it was a historical context, social context. And then we must also <coughs> retain at the same time, see how it applies to us. Not simply interpret away, no. You must interpret faithfully, creatively. And that is a very important uh, scriptural tradition, you see. Otherwise we are lost, you know. Whatever you see, you know, you can't shut out, do anything and everything, you see. And so remember that, so whether the Zen tradition, Christian tradition, Buddhist tradition, Hindu tradition, Hindu tradition also vast, it's not one tradition, you see. And so how do you choose, how do you select, what is a living tradition? These are all big questions and so on, you see. And so if they call it actually in the English word, actually I think it's a German word, hermeneutics, you see, hermeneutics means interpretation, you see. How do you interpret, you see? All our religions and so on are interpretations. You see, you can't uh, escape interpretation. But interpretation must be, as I said, faithful and creative. How do you keep interpretation faithful, creative? And also, you know, our interpretation must be oriented to the practice. Practice, that's the most important, you see. And so, practice finally, you know, for Christians, love, that's all. Can you love? Can you become loving selflessly? That is a practice in one sense, you see. And how do you sort of as I interpret this in terms of things? And that is the most important, you see. And so we have to interpret and be creative and at the same time must be oriented to living life. You must learn to live your life, you know, accordingly. <coughs> Not simply live any time, anything, discard everything, no. Be faithful, but it must be oriented to life. That is the most important. Otherwise you are only caught by theories. <coughs> the same person, you know, another question. You see, what's the connection between Zen practice, philosophy and Tantra and so on, you see. There is a famous Zen saying, a teaching outside the scriptures and teaching beyond letters and uh, uh, letters, you see, directly pointing to the heart and realizing Buddha nature, you see. Of course, it talks about beyond scriptures, beyond words and letters and so on. But the point is, you see, all the time we must be oriented to the living and loving and practice. Practice is the criterion, you see, that is a test of our living, you see. And so, the, what is the truth? How do you practice? How do you live? That is the whole practice, you know. Otherwise, we are lost. Even Jesus Christ, you know, supposed to be in the last uh, judgment discourse, he says, you see, uh, he says, you know, uh, you took care of the poor, you visited the uh, people in prison and gave the drink to the uh, thirsty, fed the people. And, you know, people, you know, who are not Christian, actually, they say, Lord, and Jesus says, I came hungry, I came thirsty, I was in jail, you visited me. And people who are not Christian, they say, Lord, when did you come? You see, and Jesus says, whenever you cared for the poor, for the hungry, for the people in jail, you cared for me. That is a criteria, you see, that love, you see, how you care for the love. So the practice is most important. Philosophy, you know, Zen philosophy, Zen theory, they are all supportive. They are all sort of, you know, show you the way in a sense. 
But the practice, you have to walk the way. You see, we talk about the four great vows. It is walking the way, you see, walking the way. Without walking the way, what is the fun now? Gathering all the knowledge, theory. This is a problem with the philosophers, with the theoreticians. They are full of theories. Theory must guide your practice, guide your living. That is the theory. See, that must be the theory. Without the uh, guidance to practice, to live and to love, theory is useless, you see. The so lot of there are same philosophies, same theories, same histories. They must be all oriented to the practice. So without practice you, you know you see, you see. About Tantra and so on, of course, this is a different philosophy. They are got a philosophy also Tantra, you see. Same practice. In one sense is Tantra in the sense sitting and practicing. It is similar in a way, but Tantra is a little different, so leave it out, you see. So Zen philosophy is a, uh, only ancillary, ancillary. See, a guide, don't make it uh, very much. That's why the koan practice, all the time, you know, I will ask, of course, how do you understand, what's the theory and so on. But, you know, it is a practice. How do you present yourself? How do you play in the koan, you see? How do you sort of, uh, sort of manifest yourself? That is the practice. And all the time also koan practice, you should not get stuck up there. Move on, move on, move on. This koan answer, good, move on. That's all. Don't get stuck up there, you see? And so these answers are not absolute answers. They are only sort of stepping stones. You step stone and pass on and go on and go on, go on. And you know, you must be transformed. Cell must be transformed, must be opened up and then become compassionate to all the beings. That is our goal, you see. That is a practice, you see. All theories must help you. And so don't be caught by theories too much. But it's very important to learn some philosophy, some theory. It's very important. Otherwise, you will be, you know, you cannot sort of understand things. You must learn to understand a little. Understanding finally must lead you to this, you see. There is one, you know, simply theories. Another is practice, seeing, experiencing. Theory, it's okay, but must help you for the practice, for living and learning. Okay.